Cool. Well, uh, my name's Federico. I own a creative agency called Juicebox. The heart of what we do is strategy. Like I said, uh, my belief is that really good ideas should have just as intentional strategy to get them out into the world. Um, I want to go through what's called the golden circle. Um, it's from a book by Simon Sinek called uh, Start With Why. Um, so if you're looking to kind of expand on this, that's going to be a great book to do that with. Um, but here's the premise. The premise is that digital strategy starts from the inside and starts from the heart. <clears throat> and so the first thing in terms of digital strategy, in terms of planning out a map, like I said, for your idea, is going to be the why. And that's the very center of the circle. And if I had a marker, which I should have asked for earlier, my bad, <clears throat> this is where it would be. It'd be the dead center. Start with why. And the why is the mission. It's why your product exists, why your idea exists. And um, it can be seen, its most concise way to share it is through your values. Thank you so much. So we have here. Our why. Okay, it's the center of the circle. And to help illustrate kind of um, why this comes first is because it's the heart. So I just draw a little cute little heart here. Okay, so uh, I have here that the vision of the company, it's the motivation be behind your service and your product. We're gonna get into more details in a second, but you'll hear this a lot. Have any of you heard of, of this? Starting with why? Mm -hmm. A few of you, right? Okay, what no one says about starting with why, it is this is the most time consuming, heart wrenching, Thing to figure out. And so I'm going to share this first, and this is the first thing you should have, but it'll take the longest and it might take you years. I'm taking like multiple years to figure out. And at the very beginning of your idea, if you have a business venture or whatever it is, this you're going to try to do first and it, you're, it's going to feel kind of weird, but you just have to keep it in mind for a few years. And then you'll start to see as you do more and more, mm -hmm. your why becomes more obvious and other people will help you do this. But anyway, I'm going to come back to this very difficult to figure out, but it's necessary when it comes to, um, I think, really heartfelt human feeling strategy or marketing comes from why. Really boring, really stale, really corporate marketing comes from product first marketing, which is talking about specs and talking about very niche details that only a few people understand or a few people care about. Why, when you start with why, you market with why, they're universal truths that a lot of people can agree with. And maybe not everyone agrees with, but at least a few people agree with and really, really resonate with. Okay, so I'll give you some examples in a second. Second, can anyone guess what the second one is? Dude, that, those are two good circles. Anyone guess? Okay, I mean, two really good circles. Second one, can anyone guess? Close. She said what? And it was close. How? How? Oh, nice. Okay, and how is the implementation of the product? Um, and the same thing can be really concisely shared with, shared by your values, what do you care about? And we'll talk about those in a second, but um, <clears throat> it's the practical steps to achieve your why. I'll say it again, so you write down. How is the practical steps to achieve your why? It's the operational knowledge that brings your vision to life. I guess I'll share this with you. Why, who, guess the last one? What is it? The third ring? Um, Where? Close. Where? Close. <laughs> one more. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay, what? Okay, so this is kind of the heart behind the circle. So I'll, I'll okay, man, this is a big thing. I got this. I'll start over here so I feel the balance. Ah, oh, so bad. Okay, not bad. Looks kind of like an eye. The first one was good. Yeah, first one's so good. Okay, erases it. Okay, what? Okay, so this is called the golden circle. Uh, it's a, <laughs> the book's by Simon Sinek. Start with why. This is the most classic marketing thing you'll ever see. 
any marketing guru that will sell you a course will be like, I've got a genius idea of marketing, and this is literally what they'll do. They got it from that book. Um, what we'll do today is I want to kind of break it down a little bit more and make it feel a little bit more tangible. The book is great. You should read it. But it literally just pretends like this is so easy. It's like, oh, it's just like your heart. It's like why you exist. Anyways, like why you exist, that takes people their entire life to figure out. So this is going to be a little bit more um, work than generally I feel like people give it credit for. So I wanted to break it down. We're going to go back to how, okay? Um, generally, when you start a product and when you start any sort of creative endeavor, many people, what they'll do is they'll start at the what? Okay, what do you want to sell, right? Let's say, can someone give me like a business idea? Really quick. Don't say photography, don't say something like that everyone their mom does. It's coming from me, I did that. So <laughs> not even make fun of me. Women's clothes. Women's clothes? Yeah. Nice, that's it. Okay, let's say we're doing cropped gray sweaters, okay? Mm -hmm. Most people, when they come up with their business idea, they'll go, okay, cropped gray sweaters, okay? Now, if they do cropped gray sweaters, they'll start with the what, and then they'll move forward. Okay, who am I selling to? When should I start? What's my logo gonna look like? They go through all this process from what and they move forward. Okay, there's a lot more things that come after this. Um, and this is usually stuff no one really cares about. Mm -hmm. And so they'll start with what and they'll move forward, okay? Years down the line, they realize, or not even years down the line, a week down the line, they go, let me look at other gray cropped sweaters. Mm -hmm. And they'll realize there's four million businesses that sell for, that sell gray crop sweaters, okay? And they run into this problem where they're like, well, mine will have a pink logo, kinda. And they're like, well, I don't really wanna think about it. So they start selling gray sweaters, okay? And then people start to say like, hey, so like what's different about your gray sweater than the gray sweater I have? And you're like, well, the gray sweater is short, it's gray, it's premium. They start to throw words out there that like they heard other people say, and they end up making a company that's identical to the other companies because they're just copying what they're saying, right? So instead of doing that, what we're gonna do is, okay, we wanna offer gray sweaters. Why do we wanna offer gray sweaters? Give me some reasons. Mm -hmm. Very cold. Cold, okay, so that's a good seasonal thing, right? We're thinking of timing for release. Awesome, keep going. Why else gray crop sweaters? Um, trendy. Trendy, okay. What else? Is it flattering? Yeah. Okay, don't insult me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's flattering? Yes. No, just <laughs> okay, what else? Give me some more reasons why. Um, why sweater and why gray? Oh, it's basic. Basic, okay. Yeah. What about the tone? What's the, what about the tone of the gray? Neutral. Neutral, okay, so what does that mean, neutral? Goes with everything. Goes with everything, okay, cool. Goes with everything, neutral, flattering, okay, keep going. What other, why gray sweater? Mm -hmm. Trending on TikTok. Trending on TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Trending, okay, keep going, keep going. What if you had it tied to like another source or like, you don't want to have like all these words sound great. Yeah. But if you have it tied to something else, like you're giving or you're like helping somebody else fund something. Exactly, yeah. Like you have a vision behind it. Mm -hmm. I think more people will look into that and they go, oh, I want to help. Well. Yeah, exactly. So. Nice, you're on course. Okay, so that leads me to the second question. I'm asking questions about the, questions about the product. Let's go a step deeper. Why are you selling gray sweaters? You're all selling gray sweaters, so tell me. Why would you sell gray sweaters? Make sure, okay, there's a good reason. Keep going. <laughs> Why you? Come with some reasons. Pretend you, pretend you were given this business and you have to do it. <laughs> Because no one's ever made the gray sweater like I can make the gray sweater. Okay, we're starting to get on the right track. No one can do it the way I did it mm -hmm. or do it. We'll do it. Well, why else? Why winter wear? Why you? Why in winter wear? Give me some. There has to be a Canadian here somewhere. Oh, I was just going to say because I'm tired of people using children to make their clothes. Okay, tired of children making their clothes. Okay. <laughs> we want adults making our clothes <laughs> with fair pay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. What else? Keep going, come on, start thinking. Any Canadians that like grew up in the cold? They know the cold, they're familiar oh, with the cold? Look good while staying warm. Look good while staying warm, keep going. Okay, now why you as a human being? Just needs my knees. Needs my knees, keep going, keep going. Search a little deeper. Takes a long time. This is pretty difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll give you an example, right? <laughs> if I can start with why, what I'm beginning to think about is why me right now? why this right now? You begin to kind of dissect the very beginning of why you started this idea. Many people will find that there's a few stories in their life 
that really kind of changed the rest of their life, right? I have a few of those stories. And a few of those stories, it, well, one of those stories, let's say, I'll give you this, okay? Okay, this is the part that I think the book, starting with why misses, and it is the very personal aspect of starting a business, okay? Many people, regardless of what you've seen out in the world, when they start businesses, a lot of it starts from a very uh, personal story in their life. A lot of times they won't share it. A lot of times they're very like more old school men or women that start businesses. Are just, so I just did it and I had to do it and I picked up my boots and I just did it, okay? Yeah. Um, and a lot of them honestly will resonate from their family. I have a family and this came up but I continue to do it because I cared so much for my family. I watched my kids love the way I worked and I wanted to inspire them to start their business, okay? So it's less about the product, the way more about, I started a business because I wanted my kids to have the freedom to do whatever they want, right? A lot of parents will have that and that's great. If you search a little bit deeper, there's usually a story they'll tell when it comes to why they continue to do their business or why they started their business. Your how, your values, what you care about and what separates you from everybody else is usually your story plus what you've overcome. And so your ability to search within yourself to find a story, and that's why earlier we talked about this and any ideas or seeds you feel coming up, it's important that you start to write those down now because you start to write the feelings that you're feeling now. I'm feeling overwhelmed, feeling stressed, I'm feeling um, annoyed, I'm frustrated, right? And so you can start to write down these feelings to be like, I'm frustrated with the way sweaters, and it's, it could be about sweaters, right? This seems so mundane, but any idea you have, it follows through. I'm frustrated that all the sweaters I have are way too long, not comfortable, shrink when I wash them, made from child labor. You start to write down these frustrations. I started this business because I was frustrated with the way I felt, with how my sweaters were making me feel. They didn't make me feel confident. I'm, I'm completely sold on the idea that I can make a staple for your wardrobe that fits you well and makes you feel confident when you leave the house. Take my money. What's that TikTok where just, they just go like this? <laughs> Does that make sense? So I'm, it, it's a lot of people will use this technique as a way to like manipulate you into buying their product. And a lot of people just honestly make it up. That's fine, they can do that. But you, when you start your business, this class, the people that I ideally learn from this, when they start it, they're starting a business very intentionally. Now I'll give you an example. When I was uh, in eighth grade, I'm teaching my little brother how to talk. We're sitting at breakfast in my dining room table, okay, at my house. And my little brother's learning how to talk, and I go, hey, Matthew, say juice. I'm like passing the juice. He's like, yee. I'm like, say juice. He's like, yee. I'm like, say juice. So I keep saying juice over and over again. He finally says juice. I'm giggling. I'm like, little kid saying juice? That's so funny. So I tell the story to a few of my friends. I'm like, ah, oh, he says juice. And then I kind of just, as a joke, to kind of bring back the story I told earlier, I go, juice. It's weird, trust me, I know, I was a very weird kid. Okay, eighth grade, I started saying juice a lot. This evolves into me start to, starting to draw juice boxes, okay? So I'd get into class, and you know, whether the teacher was looking or not, I'd just kind of come in, and i just, as quickly as possible, would draw a juice box, and i sit down, okay? They'd be teaching me, like, oh, there's a juice box in here! Everyone starts laughing, I'm like, God, it's so much attention, this is awesome, okay? I start drawing juice boxes. This is in eighth grade, okay? Sophomore year of high school, I'm so annoying, I keep saying it. Okay, people start calling me juice. I have shirts that say juice. My backpack says juice box here and then a huge juice box drawn on the back. It's embarrassing, okay? Um, and I decide there's a guy running for school for a class president sophomore year and I go, that guy's a loser. I could win that, that's so easy. So I, I put my name in to run, I forget. It's the day of voting, the morning of voting. I'm like, or the night before we need to vote. I'm like, I gotta get people to vote for me. Um, 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 so I call my dad, he's at Costco. I have him buy a bunch of juice boxes, okay? Bring them to the house, we have a label maker. We print a bunch of labels that say vote for Federico. The morning of voting, I just like throw a bunch of juice boxes out <laughs> to people. That's my last ditch attempt to get people to vote for me. I completely forgot that I thought it'd be funny to, to run. It, it works, I win. I had no plans on actually being president, but it was like, I thought it'd be way funnier to win. <laughs> Um, I ended up being president senior year. I'm like, well, I did it then. I could probably do it again. People remember the juice boxes so much. I ran on a post. The two people dropped out. So I ran on a post and I was president just immediately. <laughs> the class, but they remembered the juice boxes. I, now I had matured just a little bit and I stopped saying it. Okay, so I stopped saying it, but they remembered it two years later. Um, now as an adult, I have a juice box tattoo. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. So it's, the story has followed me, but it was a marking moment in my life. My first experience with marketing, viral marketing. Uh, it's my first experience in thinking about campaign. There's a lot of things now that I do for work that are funny that I did so intuitively in high school. 
Okay, those are one of the stories. Um, there's a few stories like that that will mark my life, and there's a few stories that I'm convinced have marked yours. But we don't like to tell them because it feels kind of like, well, I'm talking about me so much, and that's fine. But if you can start to write down and remember these stories that have marked you, you'll find that a lot of your hobbies, a lot of your interests, a lot of your desires stem from a lot of those stories. Now, <clears throat> what I was able to do is grab that story, right? Also be able to write down what I've overcome, okay? I remember feeling like, um, it was so organic and so natural feeling to throw out the juice boxes because I had already been known for juice boxes. So it made sense to me, it felt organic. So a lot of what I value for my business is organic marketing. How can we feel this as human as possible? How can we make this as funny as possible, right? So I'm thinking of funny, organic, natural feeling campaigns that people resonate with based off the experience I had when I was in high school. I'm, I've been kind of chasing that feeling and I've been able to do it. It's been great, it's been really fun. Um, but your, your story will be able to do the same. You should be able to pull out what you've overcome and your story plus what you've overcome is your how. These are the practical steps you take to achieve your why. And as you can guess, your why is, your why is basically a concise iteration of your story, okay? When people ask me why I started Juicebox, I immediately go into the story, right? If I started with what, why did you start Juicebox? I started it to be a graphic designer, do visual identity, and come up with cool creative campaigns. Mm -hmm. Everyone goes like this, everyone does that, <laughs> right? If I start here, I started Juicebox because in high school I had an incredible experience throwing juice boxes to win a presidency and they changed my life forever. That's kind of sick. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Can I pay you to do that for me? Absolutely, I'll take all your money. Okay, <laughs> does that make sense? So you start with why, you start with your vision, you start with your story. It takes a lot of interpersonal work to do that, okay? It'll take time. And in fact, to do this, it took me, okay, so that story, I have the tattoo now, I didn't have it earlier. Um, I actually got the tattoo for this class. <laughs> um, you'd be surprised, that happened, that was a very, integral story of my childhood, okay? It makes me laugh just thinking about it, okay? When I started this the business in 2019, July, I had two business partners. It took me seven months to come up with the name Juicebox. It seems so obvious now that it'd be Juicebox. Seven months. Mm -hmm. So I started to ask myself questions. I started to ask other people questions. I wanted to be cooler than Juicebox. I wanted it to be like, not that I'd ever thought of Juicebox. I wanted it to be like so cool. You hear the name, you're like, oh, dude, that's sick. Like lightning bolt or like, Dead Panther or like something crazy. And no one liked those names, it didn't resonate. It didn't really like spark any sort of emotion when people heard it. When I said juice box, people were like, oh, sick. Generally that was the emotion, right? So it took me seven months, even with that obvious of a story, right? And so whatever your story is, regardless of how obvious it is, it'll take time to develop, to get it out, to remember it. And so it's important now that you start to write these down as you're still young, you're still in college, and. Uh, maybe those stories have already happened, or maybe they will happen. So as they do, start to write them down, start to write down the feelings that occur around them, and you'll find that a lot of your endeavors in the future will stem from that idea. Lastly, now the what. So why? Your story, okay? So you start telling your why, people ask you why, you tell your story. People ask you how, you tell your story, and then you be, you're able to pull what you've overcome. Okay, what you've learned is an easier way to do it. What you've overcome personally and as a business is gonna be your, your values, okay? Now your what, again, so sorry, I should have planned accordingly with space, but I'm just used to digital things, I'm sorry, okay? Expressions of your values. Your what are expressions of your values. So I started Juicebox. <clears throat> I started Juicebox because I had an incredible experience in high school that uh, made me like marketing. Uh, how I did that, um, I now value, because of that, I value education because if I could do that as a kid, you can definitely do it because I think it's marketing and strategy is intuitive to human beings, not just something a guru has or you learn in school. Or I think it's an intuitive in all of us as humans to be able to share and want to share. It's just more difficult to write it down in a plan and make a map. So we value education, uh, we value um, fun, organic marketing, and we value 
freelancers, uh, you being able to have the freedom to do your schedule. None of what I did was planned. It was very last minute. And so I think we can continue to use that sort of feeling of like, this feels organic. It's not a lot of staff. There's no corporate structure. This feels as free as possible right now. That's kind of the freelance market. So we have those three things. Okay. Now the services I offer, most people, when you start your business or you execute your idea, you can start the services and most likely you'll already kind of have a service that you want to offer. So what you do is you grab your why, you make values, you grab your values and you make a product. And when you make a product, you're able to position it from your why because you started with your why. And so what I can do is any of my what's, let's say I sell four things. When I'm marketing it, marketing it out into the world, I can start with my why. And that allows you to create really intentional products and really intentional, um, and I think impactful businesses, is starting with your why and being able to make products that start with your why. Any questions so far? Okay, so I haven't really talked about digital strategy, okay? And usually I don't talk about digital strategy because like I said, I think it's a very intuitive thing for humans to have and to be able to do, but, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier for people to be intuitive when it comes to their marketing when they start with why, because now I can start to answer the questions who, when, oh my gosh, what was that? <laughs> I'm gonna do graffiti if that's okay. okay? <laughs> <clears throat> that's so weird, what was it, when? <laughs> um, I'm German actually, that's what you know. <clears throat> Okay, so who, who you want to write that down, these can be uh, summarized as muses. Uh, the who is the personal inspiration behind your product. Uh, a lot of same thing based on your story. A lot of the same characters that occurred here in the why will occur in the who. Um, there's a few people that come to mind, myself as a teenager. A lot of the education we make, I make it for what I would have wanted when I was a teenager. Um, I make it for my little brother. <clears throat> and there's a few other creative people that I've met that I've kind of stuck in my head that I make, when I'm making content, when I'm making videos, I have in the back of my head and I put in front of the lens and that's what I'm making the content for. It's not hundreds of thousands of people. It's that one or two people that are come to mind when I'm making the video or making content. And same thing should be happening when you're making your product. I make a product and I have one or two individuals in mind when I'm making it. This will expand as your business grows a lot more people will like it than just that one person, but generally you want one or two people to do that. Your personal inspiration behind the product, and the when is why now? People miss this question, they're like, well, I, I just wanted it. <laughs> and then what you end up doing is you miss a season, like uh, what Juan said about, I'm releasing a sweater because I was frustrated with the way I felt in my previous sweater, frustrated with the way they felt, the colors, I didn't have a staple wardrobe, and I'm doing it now because it's freezing cold to releasing this in the summer and being like, well, I mean, I just needed the money. Okay, so when you can answer the question, why now, if you had this idea in the early spring, you know, okay, I'm launching in the winter. Okay, so <clears throat> when you start with here, a lot of these other questions about who and when, which is part of your digital strategy, will be much easier, okay? So uh, I wanna say this before too, before we get into like, one more thing I wanna talk about when it comes to digital strategy. It's important that you come up with digital strategy for two reasons, okay? Number one, and I've said this already kind of a few times, one of the more important reasons for why strategy exists and why I think it's so important is because it allows you to create impactful products where you can be intentional with how you release. Just as intentional as you release the product should be just as, or just as intentional as you come up with an idea or a product or a, a movement, whatever it is that you want to come up with. As much time as you spend into that, you should spend just as much time thinking about how to release it into the world. And you can think of packaging as an example. You could think of when people tell stories, right? If I were to tell you that I'm having a baby, and I just went, yeah, we're having a baby. And so when I was five, you're just like, whoa, what the? That would have been way nice to post. I come in here, and I do like, I like some balloons, and then I play a slideshow of me as a kid, and then I put a picture of me and Candace with like, coming soon. I've built you up for 35 minutes of a cute little slideshow, and then you're crying. 100% you're crying. <laughs> so the presentation of how I share an idea, the presentation of how I share a product, even when you're asking for a raise, a lot of what they te well, they'll teach you is how you present it before it, everything that comes before you ask for a raise. 
all those details that come into presenting, humans love to be entertained and they love to be presented to. It's the same thing when it comes to releasing a new product. Just because we exist and just because we have the big idea doesn't mean that we shouldn't go put in the effort to share that reason behind to other people. Does that make sense? Whatever your purpose is in life will generally revolve around a story that you have in your heart. Something that happened either as a child or as a teenager or now that will kind of mark the way you approach ministry and you approach serving the local church in the future. Does that make sense? So this involves secularly and works in the local church realm. I'm just giving you secular, secular language because if I make this too churchy, then it'll be hard to translate this outside of the local church scenario. It's easier to go from secular language into the church scenario because you are learning about the Bible here opposed to learning about the Bible and then trying to retranslate it for people who have no context for scripture. But this comes from the Bible, okay? Um, you have your why, you have your how, you have your what. The second reason why I think it's so important that you, number one is I think it creates impactful solutions in the world, okay? Uh, number two, it allows you to follow through with your ideas. If you're like me, you have a lot of ideas and you follow through with maybe one of them. Okay. If you're like that and you're similar to me in that way, making a plan, making a strategy and starting with why will help you follow through with your idea because now you know why you're following through. You have a mission, you have an end goal in mind and you'll start to filter out good ideas from great ideas. Obviously you want to follow through with your great ideas and save your good ideas for later. Okay. If you spend all your time with good ideas, you'll have no time for great ideas. Ideally, when you leave the school, and the nice thing about being in school is you're kind of allowed to waste your time with good ideas. You have all the freedom to waste your time with good ideas. In fact, you can waste your time with mediocre ideas. And because you're in this bubble, because you're in this structure, nothing really bad happens. You try wasting your time with bad ideas in the future, as immediately as you leave college, you're gonna be way more poor than you'd wanna be. And you'll have way less time than you want to have because you'll have to work most likely, unless you have rich parents, you have so much time to waste your time. Okay, but unless you have rich parents, it's not worth, it's not economical to waste your time with good ideas or mediocre ideas. It's only worth your time for great ideas. And you can see which ideas are great by going through the structure. Does that make sense? Lastly, I'm a firm believer that, stru that structure and strategy helps avoid burnout. A lot of creatives, whether you consider yourself creative or not, will burn out because they have way too much going on for way too long. Okay, it's usually both. You can have a lot going on for a short amount of time, that's just human, that's life. Or you can have uh, something going on for way too long, but it's not that insane. You can figure that out later. It's not necessarily burnout, you're just gonna move on. When you have both together, it's the beautiful recipe for burnout, okay? What strategy does is it allows you to focus your offerings. I'm not gonna do 400 things as a small local church. I'm not gonna do 400 things as a small business. I'm not gonna do 400 things as an entrepreneur because my why can be most concisely shared and most concisely sold using four products, let's say. Live classes, online classes, um, a sweater, socks, a beanie. Underwear. Oh, that's actually sick. And wool underwear. <laughs> bad ideas, see, bad ideas. I have way more bad ideas than good ideas. Does that make sense? You, you're able to, opposed to a person that doesn't start with their why, what they'll do is they'll be like, okay, cool. We'll do, we'll do everything. We'll do shoes, we're gonna do socks, we're gonna do pants, we're gonna do a sweater, we're gonna do an Under Armour like neck thing that comes out to here and has a dragon wing coming out through here. And then we're gonna have just a dog backpack. It's gonna be so dope. And you hear these opportunities, uh, uh, entrepreneurs come up with all these ideas. You're like, okay, so dog backpack, what does that have to do with our mission? You're like, what? No, it's a sick idea. Like, okay, good idea, save for later, has nothing to do with our mission. Uh, dragon neck, again, cool idea, save for later, right? You start to filter through your ideas because you're focused on your mission. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and burnout specifically is important to, over, to learn how to uh, stop now because as an adult, it only gets worse. People will start to offer you money and it'll start to really affect the way you start to present things. Like, I won't, I won't ever do that. I literally won't ever do that. And like, will you do it for $50,000? I will do that right now and I will devote my life to it currently, right? If you don't have your why, you're gonna very quickly lose sight of who you are. Very quickly lose sight of who you are. Because people right now in college are like, hey, I'll give you like a Snickers or like I'll pay for your lunch. You're like, dude, I won't do that for a Snickers or for my lunch. People are like, I'll give you thousands of dollars. You're like, I love Snickers. I'm gonna eat that Snickers so bad. Or I'm gonna do that thing so bad. I'm gonna devote my life to that. I'm gonna 
leave my family for that, okay? <laughs> if you have your why, you'll begin to know what, what opportunities to take and which opportunities to drop, mm -hmm. or which opportunities to save for later, okay? Starting with your why is important in your life and starting your business. Cool, this is the last part to this. Russ, you're good, right? Okay, I got scared for you, okay. This is your why, again, if this were digital, I'd do this. Like I'd select this and i just move it over here. Okay, pretend this is over here, okay? Don't tell anyone this looks bad. Well, can, Russ, can we green screen this afterwards? Okay. Can we use Photoshop? Yeah, perfect, okay. So this is separate, okay? This is separate, this is afterwards. After you come up with your gold circle and you have your four, your four products, let's say four. I'm not saying four is the magic number. One product is ideal, actually. But let's say you have your four products. The, the second component to starting something, and actually, most likely your first job that you'll have, this is gonna be more valuable. You try going into, by the way, this is a warning. I've learned this the hard way, please listen. If you go into a meeting and you try starting with this, they're gonna kick you out of the room. You can't go into a pastor's office, an owner's office, an entrepreneur's office, a CEO's office, and be like, listen, uh, tell me why you started this business. If you are a minimum wage employee, trust me, <laughs> it doesn't work, okay? You could have the best idea in the whole wide world, and if you go into that business and you ask them why they started the business, unless they're very kind, there's a few businesses out there that will love it. Most of them will hate it. You can't go in with this. Okay, most likely you'll spend, if you ever get into marketing, you ever get into any sort of creative art, uh, endeavor, you'll start out here and then you'll start to trickle back. Okay, cool. So the offering, what are all the offerings we sell? Okay, cool, have your what? Okay, cool, a couple months down the line. And how did we get to these offerings? Like, were there, was there anything in particular that kind of drove us to start selling this? You know, actually, yeah, when, you know, I realized when I was walking down Portland that no one wore an umbrella and that they only wore sweaters. And so I made, I figured a waterproof sweater would be a really cool way to kind of meet the needs of Portland while still selling what we normally sell. I was like, okay, waterproof sweater, uh, Portland seasonal, he asked when, and he knew for who. Okay, great, okay, awesome. Like, when, when, and then months down the line, your friends, you're getting coffee with the CEO later down the line. And then you're like, so what made you, I mean, what made you start this? Oh, well, you know, I had a turtle uh, and I, you know, this, I was doing an exercise bike and I had a turtle and I thought it'd be so funny if I started a business before my turtle and on my bike, I thought it'd be so cool if I started to blend smoothies on my bike. And I had the idea while looking at my turtle. So I named the business after my turtle and that we started off blending smoothies on a bike. If I tried getting that story at the very beginning, it'd be so frustrating because they want you to do your job. Okay, so this will help you do that. I give an example, one of our clients is Moberry. They sell us bowls of smoothies. That's how that happened. It took multiple years to start to pull that out. Mm -hmm. And I got in trouble for trying to do it too soon. So don't do it. <laughs> okay, so here's how you go into a meeting and you start to go in reverse, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the year, okay? This is January. And this is, what is was it last month, December? Mm -hmm. I was gonna say Revelation, how funny is that? <laughs> um, like some weird conspiracy, like Genesis is January, like, okay, how's that work exactly? Um, okay, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so this is the year, right? Okay, this is the year. The year is generally divided into what? Quarters, there you go, good job guys. Okay, so it's generally divided into quarters, okay? Now, what you're looking to do when it comes to overall strategy, when it comes to concisely, when it comes to concisely sharing marketing is humans generally get bored very, very quickly, okay? Now, the way most people will treat marketing is this. I want as much content as humanly possible all year long and consistently at this volume, okay? And you're like, what do you wanna say? Just put pictures of my product up. You're like, that's not why people, that's not why people are buying your product. Okay, so that's how most people present it. And that's how actually, when you first get paid to do marketing, this is generally what they'll do. They demand volume, yeah. Eventually, would it become that though? Like if people already know your why? Kind of, just... but I'll show you what it should look like. Okay. Ideally, what happens is you have something to say. Like I said, we want valuable, intentional content always, okay? Again, this might get you in trouble, sorry. Let's say, I wanna say one thing. I'm gonna give you one, and I'm gonna draw a little lightning bolt. That's a three. <laughs> I'm just gonna do one, okay? 
No, I draw one ball. That'll work. Yep. That'll work, so. Yep. You can tell it's a light bulb. Yep. Come on, don't judge, don't judge me, okay? Yeah, okay, it's usually on Photoshop. Okay, that's what I want to say. This is my idea. Okay, this is my sick idea. Okay, now they're going to get bored so quickly. I'm going to do one more. A little better. Okay, now three. One more idea. Oh, so much worse. One more idea. Okay, so I have four big ideas that I want to do throughout the year because I'm convinced people can get bored very quickly. What I do is, now that I have something to say here, I can ramp up to this, and then I can also shut up for a second. I can ramp up to something else, I can shut up for a second. I can ramp up to something else, shut up for a second, for a second ramp up to something, and shut up for a second, okay? These valleys allow me to plan for the next. These valleys give me a break, and give my clients a break for them to start making content. So when it comes to making and sharing in and out, this is out and ideally what's coming in is this. If you do this well, okay? So this is the input of clients or your people, other people making the content, okay? Let's say, I'll give you an example. We have a huge event, thousands of people come, okay? And no one shares about it. That sucks, it means the event sucked, okay? But at its best, you have an event, you post about it, you talk about it a lot, you invite a lot of people, and everyone and their mom is talking about it. What you do is, you post about the event nonstop. You're so stoked for this event. You shut up to allow room for them to talk about it. You have something else, you, want, you release a product, you start selling the waterproof sweaters, they go berserk viral, okay? You shut up, allow other people to talk about it, okay? This is a conversation you're having with your audience. So what it looks like, right, on the, when it comes to output, is very consistent output, right? Maybe a few dips here and there, but when it comes to input and output, you've now balanced both input and output. A conversation you have with an audience which feels human. It doesn't feel like some patriarchal, or okay, maybe that's a little too much of a buzzword, or it doesn't feel like some sort of a bad relationship that you have with someone else where they're the only ones talking like in this class right now. How do you spend your time in the valley so that way it's consistent, like you're consistently going about, like even when you're in like that moment where you're saying like you kind of shut up yeah. so other people can talk about it, what does the consistency look like for you in the valley? Yeah, so as, as staying on the in the theme of um, letting them talk, ask a bunch of questions, ask your audience questions, do some surveys, um, start to give them some sort of discount in exchange for their information. Hey, I'd love to know more about why you bought this. I'd love to know more about you specifically. And this is generally where those apps and a lot of those like data tracking apps get to you. They do it in a much less human way where they're collecting data, you're just a number, opposed to an owner or a marketing team knowing exactly the faces of the people behind who they're marketing to and what to ask them. So a lot of these values kind of create that where most people only put out and have no care for the audience that they're making it for. And that's generally what you find, you get 13 likes when you post for months in a row. Usually means you haven't done enough of this valley to ask enough questions. Uh, sorry, I didn't leave too much time for questions, but any questions? Thanks, that was a good one. Thank you. How many minutes do I have left? One. Oh, perfect. Questions, thoughts, concerns, complaints, disagreements? No? no? Uh, if you have any questions, you can DM me on Instagram, at Check Your Swing, uh, or ask Kayla for my number. But I probably won't text you back. I'm pretty bad at that, so <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm.